that's that. Sad. Disappointing. Hi friends. It's been a hot minute. Maybe not for you guys, but I haven't recorded any clip of any video or vlog in like over two weeks. So how you been? Got a hat on, which I usually don't in videos, but I thought it'd be nice to rep my Tofino hat because we just came back from Vancouver this past weekend and it's been a wild ride. <laughs> so I wanted to do a couple days in my life where we talk about the books I'm reading, uh, the things I'm doing, kind of getting back into my routine, and also starting my half marathon training. But first, I want to say hi. Missed you guys. I did do some pre-filming, so nothing will be out of the ordinary for you all, but it's been a while for me. And yesterday or the day before, I hit a thousand subscribers, which is crazy. Uh, thank you that I I really don't know what to say, but that is awesome. I am so happy and it's such a great community to be a part of. So let's hope we continue to grow and foster this community together and build something great on this little tiny corner of the internet over here and talk about all the good books, about all the good foods, about all the cats and about, you know, living a normal life. I've got about an hour before I've got my yoga class, so I thought we could chat, catch up, and talk about the books I'm reading. So the first book I wanted to talk about I actually finished last night, and it's the first book I finished in July. So if that's showing you what my reading month has been looking like, <laughs> yeah, uh, but I finished this book in like three days. I love it. And that is Summer Romance by Annabelle Monaghan. Listen, we are Annabelle Monaghan stands over here. I loved her other two books, Nora Goes Off Script and Same Time Next Summer. Both were so great. I think Nora Goes Off Script I gave almost five stars and Same Time Next Summer I think I gave three and a half stars. This one might be my favorite. Out of the three. I don't think it's a full five star but it's like a 4.5 to 4.75 hundred percent. I think it's also her longest book. It did feel longer than the other ones but in a good way. This book's about a woman named Allie who is kind of going through... she's going through it. <clears throat> yes she is. She's in the middle of a divorce um, and she has two kids. Two or three kids. Oh my god. I think three. She is also kind of battling grief of her, uh, her mom passing. I think in this timeline, it's about two years, one and a half to two years since her mom passed. So, you know, you're still in the thick of it at that time. And you're kind of following her finding herself again. And she bumps into a man named Ethan and thinks, hmm, maybe I can have a summer romance with this beautiful man. And it goes from there. There is just something about Annabelle Monaghan. Her books are wonderful. They definitely explore a lot about just womanhood and kind of finding herself later on in life. Like I think all of her main female characters are in their 30s or older, even 40s. And you don't see that very often in romances, I would say. And I find that she is so good uh, explaining experiences that we don't know how to put into words and she somehow puts all these thoughts and feelings into these beautifully said sentences that are like yes that is exactly like I know exactly how that feels like that is something that I would never been able to explain um she just hits you with these lines where it just really explains feelings emotions deep emotions clearly and I love it yeah Definitely, definitely a fan of Annabelle Monaghan. I think she's going to be one of my auto buy authors moving forward. And I don't have Summer Romance yet. I've been kind of trying to do the whole read the book first and then buy it for the most part. But yeah, I'm going to have to go buy this book because I need it on my shelves. Next, I've got two books over here on the docket that I'm in the middle of. So the first book I'm in the middle of is Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. So I am quite close to finishing 
I'm liking this so far, not loving it. It is, I probably would say a thriller. Um, it's about these two friends where they are going to make a film about this place called the Road of Bones in Siberia. Uh, it's on Siberia's Kolyma Highway. It's 1,200 miles of gravel-packed permafrost within driving distance of the Arctic Circle. And there is just kind of these theories about this place where there's like bad things that happen, ghosts, you know, evil, all of those things. And so they go to make a film about it to make lots and lots of money, hopefully, right? But when they get there, things don't go as planned and it's a lot more mysterious and unexpected what they find. I'm trying to be very vague because if you do read this book, obviously I want you to go in not knowing what's happening. I'm just not gripped. I still don't know exactly like what the twist is gonna be um, or like what the resolution, what the ending is gonna be. I don't really have any guesses. I also don't feel like I care enough to guess, you know what I mean? And it is pretty creepy. It is very wintry. It could be because I'm reading it in the summertime that maybe I'm not as obsessed with it as I would be in the wintertime, but I'm still enjoying it. So that is Road of Bones. And then I'm also reading Braiding Sweetgrass, which I am over halfway done this book. Absolutely loving it. If you can see the highlighting is real. It is practically every page probably going to be in my top five of the year. That's my prediction so far. But this is a book, it's a nonfiction book written by Robin Wall Kimmerer, who is a botanist and also an indigenous woman. And this is a book all about indigenous wisdoms, kind of the mix of science and indigenous teachings, talking about mother nature and everything in between. And it is just such an inspiring and beautiful book. And again, kind of like Annabelle Monaghan, Robin Wall Kimmerer just says things so eloquently where I'm like, that is exactly how I feel. And I've never been able to put it in words. And it's also so beautiful to learn about indigenous teachings and kind of their culture and the things they believe in and how beautiful their traditions are and how respectable they are. Um, very inspiring. So I am obsessed with this book. I love it. been slowly reading this because I want to digest it as much as I can. But uh, once I'm finished Road of Bones, I'm going to dive back into this because I took a break to read Summer Romance. Those are my reading updates. I'm not going to continue blabbing on. I'm going to get back to it, get ready for yoga, and I'll see you all probably tomorrow. Good afternoon. It's lunchtime. I'm about to cook some lunch. I'm gonna make some penne a la vodka with some chicken, but I am most likely going to finish the book, uh, Road of Bones. So I wanted to give a little bit of my thoughts. I'm 85% of the way through. My audiobook, I have about an hour and a bit left. I'm at the point where I feel like I should be invested and in wanting to know what's going to happen, what's how is it going to end. I just don't care. I really don't care about these characters. I feel like it's very slow and long, but this book is not a long book. So not looking good from here, I have to say. I was thinking maybe it's because I'm reading this in the summertime, but just thinking about the book and it's not like thrilling me it's not scaring me it's a little creepy in the beginning like the descriptions were good but as the story goes along I'm just losing interest and not caring and at this point I'm really just finishing it because I'm so close to ending it but probably should have been a DNF I'm gonna start cooking because I am so hungry and I'm so excited for this meal
lunch is served. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I disappointed. <laughs> not what I was expecting it to be. So I reread the synopsis because I was kind of lost as to the point of the story after finishing it. And it's supposed to be a story about two uh, documentary producers going to the Road of Bones to do a documentary about this place on earth that has such a vast history and nobody talks about it and nobody knows about it because it's in Siberia and it's freezing cold there. As you're creating a documentary, you want to know the facts, the people, the culture, and you don't really get any of that in this book. Near the end, I would say you get some tidbits of like the folklore that they have, but not really much. Like they get there and, and you get into this like thrilling kind of post-apocalyptic kind of feeling. It's like the documentary is flown out the window and suddenly they're like looking for ghosts and and creatures. Um, just not what it felt like it was supposed to be about. And I wasn't a fan of the characters. I didn't really love any of them. Didn't care what happened to them. The ending also felt a little just weird. I don't know about this one, guys. I'm, I'm upset and sad that... I didn't like this as much as I thought I would. I was really, really excited about this one. But yeah, I think I might give it a 2.5. Those are my kind of first impressions right after finishing this. Like I literally finished this a couple minutes ago. So that's that. So now the last book that we've got going for me is Braiding Sweetgrass. So we're going to continue that. But last night, right before bed, I started a novel love story by Ashley Poston because I have like eight days left of my... Uh, hold so or loan so I need to read it. I got like 25 pages in not loving the main character and the narration. I'm hoping it gets better. It doesn't seem like it does uh, based off of reviews and what my friends have said but yeah it's just very cheesy and annoying and so many movie and kind of pop culture references that it is um, very childish. Not a fan so far. I'm I'm praying it gets better because I adored Ashley Poston's writing in The Seven Year Slip and I really liked it in The Dead Romantics as well. So I'm not sure what's going on. Look at this cutest little baby. What are you doing? Hmm? Spice? Oh, your toy just turned on.
currently Saturday. It's almost noon. <laughs> and I've literally spent like since 9 a.m. working out. I'm tired, but I wanted to discuss, I briefly mentioned, I think in the first clip of this vlog, that I am starting my half marathon training. So let's talk about that while I make my BCAAs because I did hot yoga this morning and then decided to go for a run right after because I didn't want to shower twice today. Mm, I'm tired. So I take BCAAs after really hard workouts for recovery because I notice, especially after running, it's very hard for me to recover. And then I also have these aminos by Keon. Um, I like adding this specifically because it has a nice flavor and then it also has additional you know, l 3 anine l methanine things like that um so these two together usually i get the watermelon one but let's mix it up i have left over here i think a mix of both of them when i had my 10k run i'll do that <laughs> so about three weeks ago i think i ran a 10k race with one of my friends and because i was training for that and pretty consistent with the training i did <clears throat> nice i decided it's probably the best time for me to do half marathon training because i've always wanted to run a half marathon never thought i could but now that i've been running more long distance i was like let's try why not this is chaotic why did i think this was gonna be an appropriate way to do this update. I did groceries yesterday, so the fridge is packed, but this was on sale at Costco, and it's one of my, if not my favorite, um, like salad kit. I don't usually get salad kits that often, but this one is so good. It's the dill pickle one. And listen, I'm Polish. We love our pickles. I'm gonna have half of this and some leftover pasta. So the reason I ran today was because I got new running shoes and new headphones. So I got the, I finally invested in the Shox. Uh, these are the Shox Open Run Minis. They're so tiny, but they go, they go over your ear and they're bone conducting headphones. So they don't actually go in your ear. They go on like the bone of your ear right here and so you can hear what's going on around you but also listen to your music and i for years have used airpods and probably every 30 seconds to a minute i have to pop them back in because they just slowly fall out the more that i sweat and it just ruins the running experience so i finally got these on prime day it was on sale for 115 dollars uh canadian so i ran with them for the first time today and i loved it i could hear my music i could hear my surroundings i didn't have to fix them at all yeah no complaints here and then my boyfriend got me new running shoes i got the on cloud what are these ones? I think they're the Cloud Chaser. I'll put the name of them down here. So I ran with them for the first time today and I love the green accents. Oh my God, the bottoms are already so dirty. Let me tell you, those are really nice shoes. I have problems with running shoes a lot of the times and those ones were amazing. I had no problems with like my ankles hurting, my knees hurting. I had so much support. I wasn't like flimsy with them. I really have no complaints so far. So I'm very happy with these two investment pieces. And my official marathon training starts, I think next weekend was my first run, but uh, I wanted to do a couple runs before that because it's been three weeks since I ran. So I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of slowly go back into it before I have to start running like, eight kilometer plus runs you feel me happy monday all right i did not vlog at all yesterday i apologize but yesterday was a little bit of a spontaneous beach day so we were out literally all day i don't think i got any clips of the beach i'm sorry um and then i went to my mom's we had a barbecue got home went to bed 
And here we are. It's Monday. It's lunchtime. It is 12 13 right now. I thought we could do a little catch up and then we'll go for a walk together. I have not finished any other books this weekend. I'm really trying with a novel love story, but that book is so boring and cringy <laughs> right now that it's been putting me to sleep so fast. Most of my reading is done before bed and usually I can get a good 30, 50 pages if it's a really good night in, but I've been getting like seven, eight pages, <laughs> like nothing. I think I'm 50 pages into that book and I'm not liking it. Um, and I'm afraid because everyone I know is giving it three stars or below. I'm so bad at DNFing though, but I don't think I'm gonna have an update for the ending of this book for you guys in this vlog because today I wanted to end this vlog. Um, and I haven't finished Braiding Sweetgrass as well. We're only gonna have two books done for this vlog. We read Summer Romance and Rota Bones. So sorry about that, but that's a little bit of a reading update. Braiding Sweetgrass I'm still loving, um, but I still have like a hundred and somewhat-ish pages left and I don't wanna rush it just to update you all. I can update you all on, you know, my wrap up if I finish it by the end of the month. I have a box of books from my last unhaul and I try to remember, I forget a lot of the time to bring like five or so to and put in the little libraries near me when I go for walks and I keep forgetting. So got my tote, my beautiful leaves tote from my friend Jas. This is also the tea that I am obsessed with and drink every single day if you guys were wondering. But yeah, we're gonna fill this up and then go for a walk. Let's go to my box of books and pick out what we're gonna donate today. <laughs> we'll get rid of the setup. No, the sweetest revenge. Maybe we'll get rid of all my romances. So I've got If the Shoe Fits, Buy the Book. I think all of these were in my last unhaul the setup with love from cold war wreck the halls business or pleasure the boy with the bookstore what else do we have here we have the nicom i don't know how to say that ethics red alert some yeah, let me see if i can fit these all i think that was like 12 books so we'll go and donate that and then the rest of these will have to be for the next time I remember. 